Hi, my name is Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for the Physician Enterprise. Today is Tuesday, July 5th. I hope everyone had a happy 4th of July. Welcome to the five-minute check-in. So today, as always, we're going to review what's happening with COVID across the United States and here at Common Spirit Health. And then we have a special guest joining us to talk about monkeypox, which is now more prevalent in the United States. So as we look at the numbers across the United States, cases overall are flat, but there is regional variation. In the Northeast, those numbers are coming down. In the South, those numbers are coming up. Interestingly, hospitalizations and mortality are basically flat. A new variant, BA4 and BA5, are on the rise. And that gets us to this question of vaccinating specific to the COVID Omicron variants. And they're looking at having those new vaccines for the fall. Now, this is reminiscent of what we do for influenza every year. We try to analyze the new patterns as the flu virus mutates and then vaccine are created in anticipation of those new variants. So we're in a similar situation that we see with influenza. The big debate right now is should patients be getting that second booster or should they be waiting to the fall to get the Omicron specific vaccine? And this is being discussed in the literature as we speak. It's most important if people haven't had that first booster that you encourage them to get that. So now on to our special guest, Dr. David Quimby, who's an assistant professor of medicine at the Creighton School of Medicine in Omaha, Nebraska, and a member of the Division of Infectious Diseases. Uh, thanks for joining us today, David, and talking to us about monkeypox. Thanks for having me. So, you know, we were just getting over a lot of the concerns about uh, COVID, still concerned about it, working our way through this, and, and out of nowhere comes uh, this discussion around monkeypox. And can you refresh our memories uh, from our medical school days? You know, what is monkeypox and, and what are some of the signs and symptoms of it? Okay. It's one of the pox family of viruses, and there's a few of them. Uh, we all know about smallpox, which was eradicated. Um, what most people don't actually think often as a pox virus, but is, is molluscum. That can affect little kids, runs through daycares, but generally not very serious. This is in the same family as those guys. All right. And, and, how, and tell me a little bit about how it's spread. It's generally spread by contact from an open lesion, but because people can have open lesions in their mouth or in their throat, you could also do it by droplet spread. There's a theoretical small risk of true aerosol spread. So mm -hmm. if somebody's in the hospital with it, it's recommended they're in isolation for that, but it tends to be really more contact or perhaps close exposure to droplets. Well, that's good news. Uh, tell us a little bit, what do the numbers look like right now in the United States? <laughs> As of July 1st, uh, we've had uh, 460 cases diagnosed in the United States. Worldwide with this outbreak, a little under 5,800. So it's picking up in, in numbers. It's, uh, it's out there for sure. Really quick, tell us the incubation period, signs and symptoms we should all be looking for, and maybe a little bit about you know what are people mistaking it for or et cetera, the differential diagnosis. Okay. Incubation is between five days after exposure to maybe up to three weeks. Most of the time it's in the uh, seven to 14 day range, somewhere in there. Uh, generally people get a mild flu-like thing, low grade temperature, backache, headache, and then they get a rash. The rash doesn't have to be everywhere. It could just be a few lesions. And with this outbreak, as opposed to earlier historical ones, there seems to be more in the uh, genital or rectal area, depending on that's how people were exposed. Uh, the rash, because it is just skin lesions, it can be confused with other things that cause skin lesions, like herpes, chicken pox, if it's widespread, right. syphilis, any sort of rash thing. Got it. And what are we doing in terms of vaccines and prevention and, and treatments for this when people catch it? Most people are not sick enough to require a hospital stay, which is a very good thing. Um, there are some medications that are available. Uh, you have to get them through the health departments. You can't just go to mm -hmm. the neighborhood pharmacy and pick them up. For high-risk people, some areas are vaccinating. Otherwise, if you have a known exposure, you can also get vaccinated. Again, that's through the local health departments. And the main theory to try to curb spread is to just have a high clinical suspicion so you can actually diagnose it and then go ahead and vaccinate their contacts to prevent them from becoming ill. 
Got it. So vaccinated contacts, maybe some vaccinations of the high risk groups. Uh, so, well, David, thank you for joining us. And, you know, ID has been in front and center for COVID and now back into monkeypox. So thank you for everything that you've done for Common Spirit Health. Uh, you've been on the front lines and we really appreciate everything you do. No problem. Thanks a lot. So thank you for joining me again for the five minute check in. I'll see you all in two weeks.